Ainsford, Kent, 1980s and 2020s with its amazing castle. In the early 1980s, I was very concerned about the number of old buildings disappearing. So I photographed parts of Alpington, Kent and London to create a record. I mainly focused on listed buildings and locally listed ones, as well as anything interesting I came across. Well, Ainsford was old and interesting. So I took some pictures and have come back to see what has changed and also to take another look at its amazing castle. Please stay to the end for all the details. I hope you enjoy. Please like and subscribe. Brought to you by Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images. Ainsford Village is just outside London in Kent and sits on the River Darrant, where, as the name suggests, there is also a ford over the river. This is Ainsford as shown on Historic England's map of listed buildings. As you can see, there are quite a few listed buildings in Ainsford. Zooming in on the plough, we will start there. This is a view from 2022. And this is a similar picture of the plough pub and the buildings next door that I took in 1981. The plough cottages next to the plough are grade two listed and are 16th century or even older. The plough pub itself, although it has the same name, is decorated quite differently in the early 1980s. Let's compare the pub 40 years apart. The building looks the same, but the signage is all changed, as has the paint scheme, with it being a lot lighter now. Also, these lights have gone and been replaced by flower baskets. Coming out a bit from the photo, it's the little things that have changed. In addition to the cars, the pins very much date the photo, with the large green ones seen here. Here is a similar view from 2022, confirming that in addition to signage, it is really only the cars and the pins that have changed. This is the village in 2023, and we now turn and move towards the bridge and the ford. The bridge is actually an ancient monument. It is at least 17th century, but as multi-span bridges often date back to medieval times, it is possible there are concealed parts of the bridge that are actually much older. Looking back at the pictures I took in 1981 and comparing with similar views today, the overall scene is pretty much the same, but there are a few little things that have changed. In 1981, part of the wooden rail had just been replaced. By 2022, it has been replaced at least once more and has weathered in. Carrying on the comparison, the road sign by the Ford, as well as now being upright, also has more direction on which vehicles should use which crossing. On an earlier visit to Ainsford back in the 1980s, I actually remember a Ford Escort getting stuck in the Ford, though unfortunately I didn't have a camera with me at the time. Another change is the sign of the Ford showing the depth of the water. Though interestingly, it was one foot deep in both photos, despite being over 40 years apart. A further curious change is the double yellow line no longer ends at the end of the bridge but goes all the way round into the Ford. I don't know if there are any issues with vehicles parking there over the years. Looking at another picture, first from 1981, if we look under the bridge, we see the bottom of the old corn mill with its arched roof. Looking at a video from 2023, taken from the bridge, we can see the water flowing under this grade two listed building. The mill dates back to the 18th century though there was almost certainly an earlier mill on this site. If we merge a modern video with the old photo from 1981, we can compare the impact of the last 40 years. It isn't a great deal. Looking beyond the Ford, we can see the Church of St. Martin, which has parts dating back to the 12th century. It's well worth a look around. Then, if we walk towards the castle, we come across this interesting box on the street. It is an old cable or control box of some kind, but it is a bizarre curiosity to find in the village. To get to the castle, keep walking down the high street and then turn left as seen on the map. As an overview, we can see the location of the castle, shaded in red, and the blue river down snaking round the castle. 
it is easy to miss the castle entrance as the lane it is on looks like it could be a residential road. There is a weathered sign on the high street and then when you go down the lane there is an even older sign directing to the small car park. The easiest way to find the castle is probably to look for the castle hotel and then directly opposite is the entrance drive. I shot this footage in the summer of 2022 showing the actual castle entrance. It is administered by English Heritage and is free. It is normally open 10 till 6 in the summer and 10 till 4 in the winter. This castle is amazing. I like it for many reasons but it's unusual shape, it's high walls, it's moat and that so much of it has survived given that it's around 950 years old. As with many castles, its construction started off the Norman Conquest. Building started in 1085. However, it wasn't actually in use for that long as a castle. It has been unoccupied after a dispute in 1312 that left it damaged. This means that for 700 years, it's not been in use, yet there is still pretty much at its original height. And the site itself is probably even older as this castle was almost certainly built on Saxon remains, though not much is known about this. This castle is a scheduled monument. Most Norman castles, which were generally built to keep control of the locals, are of a Mott and Bailey design, a hill with a tower on it and a lower enclosed area, like this one at Totnes in Devon. So Ainsford is unusual, though all castles are in some way different. With Ainsford, everything was within one wall. Though interestingly, it is raised about two metres from the ground, as was discovered when part of the wall fell down in the 19th century. The one defensive wall is pretty impressive though. It is high at 8.8 .8 metres and has a thickness at the base of 1.6 metres. As with most castles that have survived for so long, this building has had multiple uses. In the early 1800s, it was used as stables before various attempts at restoration. There is also the River Darrant seen here and earlier at the Fordham Bridge. Control of this river would have played a large part in the castle's location. Also, many stories attached themselves to the remains, even as recently as 2018 when there were reports of a ghostly black monk made in several press articles. These are some shots from 1987, blurred into similar pictures from 2022. All there really is to highlight is that the fence around the moat at the entrance has now gone and there are some temporary barriers inside, which could be a concern for the state of the building. But there are also now some useful information boards on the site, which were not there in the 1980s. The castle has an excellent moat, if now partially filled in. To demonstrate its size, this is a walk round the moat sped up by a factor of four. This castle is great just to walk around and I'm amazed that it is over 900 years old and this much has survived. To get to the castle there are good rail links, Ainsford has its own railway station and there are major roads nearby. The castle itself has no facilities but the village has plenty to offer. Unfortunately in 2023 the castle was closed with this note on the gate. Hopefully it will reopen soon. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be making more similar ones, so please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience, change seen through images.